She was born on December 25, 1821 in North Oxford, Massachusetts. She was not trained as a nurse, but to many a wounded and dying soldier on the battlefield, she was their Christmas present. She was born Clarissa Harlow Barton, but this professional angel is known throughout Civil War history simply as Clara Barton. And today, we're going to take a look at this remarkable woman from the American Civil War. Hello and welcome back to Civil War Reports. I am your War of the Rebellion reporter, Brian Thomas Kopak. And as I mentioned in my first episode, we were not only gonna look at the battles of the American Civil War, but also the people, the men and the women that made Civil War history. And today, I'm gonna to focus on one of those women who did make Civil War history, Miss Clara Barton. Now, what do we know about her? Well, briefly, she was the youngest of five children and she described her childhood as rather sad. She spoke with a lisp and she became the butt of jokes uh, to many of her peers in school. And her mother was extremely stern, but she was very close and devoted to her father. Uh, her father was a veteran of Indian Wars and she loved listening to her father tell of stories and other tales from his days during the war and that in many ways sowed the seed of her patriotism. Um, what we also know about her childhood and again very briefly is um, she was more of a tomboy. She enjoyed riding horses and doing more boyish things than girl things. And she kind of grew up in many ways believing that just because she was a woman, she was not limited in what she could do. Um, she was not trained as a nurse. In fact, quite the opposite. She was trained as a teacher, but she did have some nursing experience when one of her brothers uh, suffered a terrible injury and she helped nurse him back to health. And it was because of her experience as a teacher that fate just sort of had things collide. She was in the right place at the right time and because of her experience as a teacher, it sprung her into action at the very, very start of the Civil War into doing something to help the wounded soldiers. So Clara Barton had no real experience and education and training as a nurse, but she did have training as a teacher. And when she was teaching, she actually surprised many in her community when she was able to handle the roughest and toughest boys in her class. Her experience growing up pretty much as a tomboy helped, and this is gonna come into play during the American Civil War. So, in July of 1854, she accepts a job at the U.S. Patent Office, and she was paid on equal footing as a man. She was pretty much the first government worker, government female worker, to be paid equally as a man for doing the same work. But her experience at the Patent Office would kind of be short-lived because she would be uh, fired from her position by the Buchanan administration for her black republicanism. But she would get her job back once the Lincoln administration came into office. On April 12, 1861, the Confederates fired on Fort Sumter and thus the American Civil War began. Exactly one week later, on April 19, 1861, the 6th Massachusetts was making its way down to Washington, D.C. And when they stopped at Baltimore to switch trains, the 6th Massachusetts was attacked by an angry mob. They were hit with rocks and bottles and clubs, and many wounded men from the 6th Mass made it down to Washington, D.C. And here is where Clara Barton's experience as a teacher, and she just happened to be in the right place at the right time, it all coalesced. Because when she went to look at these wounded men, she recognized some of them as her former students. And she sprang into action. Because she knew these men personally, it motivated her to do whatever she could to take care of these wounded men. Now, the wounded men of the 6th Mass, when they came to D.C., the makeshift hospital became the U.S. Capitol building. 
and Clara Barton sprung into action. She began to nurse them, feed them, do whatever she could to take care of them. She began a letter writing campaign back home and said, you know, I know these men personally. We need to do something to help them. And before she knew it, she basically became the recipient of many items for these wounded men. Fresh vegetables, um, baked goods, uh, canned goods, um, even sewing kits, stuff the soldiers would need in the field. Uh, anything you could think that a wounded soldier would need, she began to receive. And before she knew it, not only was her apartment overflowing with goods and items for the wounded soldiers, she had to basically start renting out a warehouse. And before she knew it, she basically became the go-to person for anybody looking to send items to help wounded soldiers. I'm standing on the Manassas battlefield and Clara Barton was not present for the Battle of First or Second Bull Run. But when the Battle of First Bull Run took place in July of 1861, Clara was in Washington, D.C. She was there when the demoralized, defeated Union Army returned to the nation's capital both the unscathed and the wounded. And when Clara saw the wounded, once again, she decided she had to spring into action. And she began to administer whatever care she could to those wounded Union soldiers. She would assist in nursing, feeding them, and even writing letters home for the wounded soldiers. I'm back at the Manassas battlefield. The Second Battle of Bull Run, or Second Manassas as it was called by the Southerners, took place at the very end of August in 1862. A few weeks prior, the Battle of Cedar Mountain took place on August 9th, 1862. It was a one-day battle in which General Jackson's Corps took on the Second Corps of General Pope's Army of Virginia. That was a newly created army created on June 26, 1862, by President Lincoln. And it was a one-day battle. And it started off looking like it was going to be a Union victory, but by the end of the day, Stonewall Jackson handed the Union Army yet another defeat. And the Battle of Cedar Mountain would be the first time that Clara Barton would actually visit and care for the wounded at the battlefield. No, she was not there during the actual battle, she would arrive four days later, but there were still plenty of Union wounded lying about in makeshift field hospitals. Dr. Dunn would name her the Angel of the Battlefield as a result of her actions at Cedar Mountain. She cared for both Union and at times even Confederate wounded. That's the kind of person she was. A couple weeks later, as I said, this Battle of Second Bull Run would take place here, the end of August. Now, Clara Barton was not here at this battle either. When this battle took place for the second time, she was in Washington, D.C. But when she heard of this battle, she gathered up some friends, loaded up a train's worth of medical supplies, and headed to Fairfax Station, just a few miles east of where I stand. There, she cared for some of the wounded from both this battle as well as the Battle of Chantilly. And as a result of Second Bull Run, Robert E. Lee became emboldened to invade the North. And he would take his army into Maryland, and that invasion would culminate at the Battle of Antietam, or Sharpsburg as the Confederates called it. And there, Clara Barton would be on the scene during the battle. I'm in front of the monument dedicated to Clara Barton here at the Antietam battlefield. And it's basically in front of the Joseph Poffenberger farm and next to the monument for the 7th Pennsylvania Reserves. And it was here at Antietam that Clara Barton was on a battlefield while the battle was taking place. Uh, the Battle of Cedar Mountain. She arrived there a couple of days later, but here she would be at the battlefield while the battle was still going on. And if it wasn't for her innovative thinking, she probably would have also arrived at this battlefield after the battle had taken place. 
You see, Clara Barton was given permission to travel with the army with wagon loads full of medical supplies for this battle. But the night before, she was in the rear of the column, several miles from the battlefield, and it was very possible she could have missed the battle altogether. But she got very innovative after she asked if she could pass the wagon loads full of military supplies needed for an army to fight a battle, and she was refused. So she just decided that when the military teamsters would pull over for the night, she would continue to drive her horses and her wagons through the darkness, through the night, and thus allowed her to arrive on this battlefield shortly after the battle opened. And she just basically followed the sound of the guns and it brought her in front of the Joseph Poffenberger farm. So this monument was dedicated many years after the battle. But I want to point out something very interesting. If you come here to the Antietam battlefield, you look down here, you see a red cross. That cross was made from bricks from the chimney of her childhood home in North Oxford, Massachusetts. The Joseph Poffenberger barn, like many of these structures around here, became field hospitals. It was here that Clara Barton got her first taste of nursing while under fire. And she brought with her many supplies that the Union medical staff forgot to bring, such as candles, something as simple as that. She was able to help the Union surgeons operate through the night because they didn't even remember to bring candles with them to the battlefield. So it was here that Clara Barton got her first, but not her final taste, of nursing while an actual battle was going on. Now I want to point out that Clara Barton did not confine herself just to the Eastern Theater. She did not confine herself to just trailing along with the Army of the Potomac, no. By the summer of 1863, while the Union Army of the Potomac was engaging Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia at the biggest battle of the American Civil War, that being the Gettysburg Campaign, Clara Barton was down south. She was actually in the Charleston, South Carolina area, and she actually helped tend to the wounded that took place uh, during the attack on Battery Wagner just outside of Charleston. She helped not only white Union soldiers and at times Confederate soldiers, she also brought aid and comfort to those of the 54th Massachusetts when they attacked Battery Wagner. Clara Barton did not discriminate. A wounded soldier was a wounded soldier. Granted, her patriotism lied with the North. She became not only an army nurse, but she became a recognized symbol as the person to contact, to try to help with missing loved ones. If a soldier was listed among the missing, Clara Barton would try to locate where that loved one was. And after the American Civil War, she also was a main player in identifying the soldiers buried as a result of the Andersonville prison. After the war, Clara Barton would go on to organize the first American Red Cross chapter here in the United States. And as fate would have it, she passed away on April 12th, 1912, exactly 51 years after the Confederates fired on Fort Sumter and started the American Civil War. And if you would like to read more about this topic, the main sources I used to bring this episode to you were Angel of the Battlefield, The Life of Clara Barton by Ishbel Ross and Clara Barton, Professional Angel by Elizabeth Brown Pryor.